Welcome to episode 18 of Dive into Reiki podcast. Today I have a wonderful guest and uh, she lives in Spain. Her name is Rika Saruhashi and I'm probably pronouncing that very badly. So sorry, Rika, but she's a Reiki <laughs> master from the Gendai Reiki lineage. She was born in Japan, but she has lived in Madrid for the last 30 years. And Rika is very active teaching, offering sessions, but she's also been translating a lot of texts by Hiroshi Doi and his writing since 1999. And she also created a new uh, imprint called Neko Editorial or Ediciones de Neko, mm -hmm. so Neko Editorial. Mm -hmm. And she's mm -hmm. publishing first the most beautiful translation of the Emperor Meiji's poem selected by Mikao Sui, and really bringing that idea of like beauty of illustration uh, with this beautiful content. So I cannot say how much I'm grateful, Rika, for you joining <laughs> me today. No, thank you for the invitation. I'm very excited. Thank you. Thank you so much. And so I wanted to start, like I start every interview the same way. Mm -hmm. And is how did you discover Reiki? What was your first experience with it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, how did I discover Reiki? Um, it's a very uh, maybe typical story um, for a Japanese citizen because um, we didn't know the existence of uh, Reiki or Usui Reiki Yoho uh, during decades. So I discovered Reiki, I got to know Reiki in Spain uh, through my Spanish friends. And before that, I was seeing the words Reiki, uh, the term Reiki in some magazines, you know, and I was like, oh, it sounds like Japanese word, but <laughs> it sounds a little bit strange. And mm, no, it was like, wow, well, what, what can I, what? can I understand from this, no? Is this some kind of uh, a, a sect, no? A sectarian group of Japan or something? And that was my first impression. And it, maybe it's a typical impression of the Japanese citizen uh, who hear for the first time um, the word Reiki. <laughs> it's, it's, so, mm, I was very sick, very sick uh, from kidney uh, dysfunction. And um, for, uh, I wasn't living a normal life anymore. So my friends, uh, they recommended me to do Reiki, a um, Spanish friend and uh, two brothers. Yes. And um, well, Reiki always sounded very, very strange to me, the word Reiki but something motivated me to, to take a plane and go to a city called Vigo. <laughs> it's in north of Spain, Vigo, yes, <laughs> Galicia. And I took a Reiki course there and uh, I just loved it. Uh, I, I, the thing that I heard know uh, about Reiki, history, history of Reiki, about the Mikao Sui, life of Mikao Sui. Um, it all sounded a little bit um, strange for Japanese persons because <laughs> I went with my Japanese friend, um, but we just loved it. And uh, I, I have been treated by many types of method, alternative methods, complementary method. I myself was learning also to, to cure me, to heal me, but I never got to know something like Reiki. It, it changed my life in two days, S oh. Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> that was, yes. And, um, I started also to feel a lot better. I could live a almost normal life. And um, I, I, I just didn't understand what happened, but I knew something very important happened. <laughs> that was my beginning, <laughs> yes. That's beautiful because it's funny, you 
your teachings now, your writings are so on the spiritual side that it's interesting to see that you actually got into the physical benefits of Reiki, right? Because a lot of us, we go to Reiki because of stress relief, like a lot of emotional hurt. So it's interesting mm-hmm. you actually start with the physical and work your way and still very physical because it keeps us healthy. Um, mm-hmm. But how do you evolve that practice? So what was the first lineage that you trained in? Um, it's called Usui Tibetan, Usui Tibetano. Um, I don't know. It's, uh, I didn't even know what it was. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> yes, that was it. Was a, um, a school of Reiki that was. Uh, it is uh, It is also nowadays mostly widely spread in Spain. Is Usui Tibetan, and uh, it's an American system. I think. I think. Yes. Yeah, and. Yes, um, for that time, it didn't matter to me what it was, <laughs> actually, <laughs> because I just felt the great benefits for myself. So I didn't even question, I didn't even think about it. I just loved Reiki, I just loved the practice, yes. That, mm-hmm. that is such a beautiful point, right? Like sometimes we get really hung up on lineages and styles and names and mm-hmm. And actually, we should focus on the benefit and the quality of the mm. practice at the end. And I mm. wanted to go a little more because obviously you're a Japanese who go to Spain, learns this Reiki that is very westernized. So what jumped at you when you heard Mikao Sui's story? It's like, why is this weird? And how mm. did you end up finding your Gendai lineage? A little bit of that journey. Mm-hmm. I was very happy with Usui Tibet, and even though, okay, some things were really <laughs> not very correct <laughs> from the point of view of Japanese uh, people. Um, the history, you no, know, um, they teach in Western Reiki are not very Japanese, it's not very Japanese, but really it, it doesn't matter to me at all yeah. because uh, there's something about this, no, uh, all this. It doesn't matter uh, what, uh, uh, in what, uh, in, in, in what <laughs> uh, group you belong yeah. to. It doesn't matter what kind of Reiki you practice. Reiki always touch you, and Reiki always works. <laughs> so um, I was so happy during three years. But um, my master, Spanish master, he gave me a book of Frank Frank Arjava. Yeah, Frank Arjava in English. Yeah, Frank Peter. And uh, yes, and uh, it was in English, of course, but I thought I can understand English perfect. So I read it and I was very surprised to discover that Reiki exists in Japan, <laughs> existed in Japan, and it, it exists, or no, uh, actually today too. So my master and my friend who recommended me to do to, to Reiki, uh, we started to prepare uh, a trip, a journey to Japan in 1999. So uh, it was the reason that I got to know Gendai oh, Reiki wow. Ho and as a Japanese method. Yes, it's it's, it's like um, um, yeah. I, I I was very happy with what I had. I was practicing it, it just that as we found out that there was Reiki in Japan, and maybe we could find out nothing very interesting things. So we just prepare ourselves and we went in like a few months. <laughs> we were there in Japan. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. So, no, and also being Japanese is like interesting because when I heard the westernized history of Reiki, I didn't even mm-hmm. suspect there might be something else, right? For me, it made sense. Mm-hmm. Like he's a Christian doctor. He went because it was so similar to a Christian point of view. I'm like, of course mm-hmm. it is. You know, I've never been to Japan. Do you know any Japanese people? It's like, yeah. it makes sense. But I love who like, yes, you may work, but like in your case, your roots in a way is like, hey, I'm from here. Let me go back and, and explore, right? And even though, as you say, like no matter what history we learn, it works. Mm-hmm. But it's interesting. It so, 
at the end it's like hey i'm from there let me find out what happened right yes 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 um because um there's something you know um beyond no, humans no force to what is uh, universal energy is cosmic energy you know what we call in japanese uh, reiki and uh, it, it, not, i don't know and also i got to japan and the first thing that i participated um without really knowing that it was going to happen was a reiki congress of reiki oneness <laughs> reiki oneness wow that is <laughs> like serendipity you know yeah so i always believed in um reiki as one and no matter what uh kind of method you learn um reiki that's something very important to each person no, who has interest and um, start to uh, learn Reiki. So, but of course, um, when I went in 1999, I was the only Japanese person. And now I was also very accustomed to translating because that was my profession for very many years. So I translated in all the, the courses and you know, uh, in this Congress too. So um, then I, uh, realized you no, know, because my friends, Spanish friends, of course, they don't know Japanese. And I thought, oh, this is, this must be my mission, no? Um, I can understand this perfectly in Japanese. And I also have Japanese sensitivity, sensitivity because I'm from Japan. <laughs> and so, um, it was like, oh, I have to do something about it. And I am type of person who doesn't think at all when I want to start something, I just start. I start to <laughs> run before I start thinking. So I started to run <laughs> from 1999. So the next year, year 2000, I had a lot of economic, uh, economic, economic difficulty because yeah. I, left my job of translator because I loved Reiki so much that I wanted to dedicate to Reiki, but I was a very big economic uh, problem. But even that, I had to go to Japan. So I went to Japan for a, a, a very important historical uh, workshop uh, of uh, Yuri, it's called Yuri, it doesn't exist anymore. It was uh, internet, uh, how they say, uh, uh, Yuri is Usui Reiki Ryoho International. Okay. And uh, Yuri was just a connect, uh, people uh, from many types of school of Reiki uh, connected uh, via internet. And um, it existed during years. And uh, Yuri organized the first uh, meeting in Kyoto in 2000. So, I had to go because I also wanted to learn more from Doi Sensei. And my teacher from other school was there too. So I had to go. <laughs> so I jumped into all this without thinking. <laughs> it was like my destiny. Yes, I found my place you know, in, in, work, in this work. Yes. That is beautiful. <laughs> and for the people who are not familiar with what Gendai Reiki Mm -hmm. Could you explain very simply what Gendai Reiki is so people know? Because again, there is no better words, but like we don't know what the difference are. So it's great for them to understand what you practice. Yeah. Um, Gendai Reiki, um, sometimes um, we call it as, um, how do you say? Uh, Usui Reiki Ryoko is a method that uh, Usui Sensei founded. And um, 
it's it's Usui Reiki Ryoko, uh, no, Gendai Reiki style. No, it's yeah. very purely Usui Reiki Ryoko because uh, Hiroshi Doi has a very big, uh, wide, and very profound knowledge of what is uh, Usui Reiki Ryoko of uh, Mika Usui. Yeah. Um, and also, it's called the updated version of Usui Reiki Ryoho. It's adopted you know, uh, to um, contemporary world for yeah. the daily practice. And also, not only daily practice, uh, it's a very profound method, too. And um, uh, what um, because I mean, maybe I'll, I'll just uh, how do you stay interrupt here uh, uh, to, before I'm going to yeah. something deeper? No? But it's a fusion also of um, Western Reiki because Hiroshi Doi started like me with Western Reiki. Yeah. <laughs> so, for, like many Japanese uh, masters, they started with Western Reiki taught by Western masters in Japan. So, Hiroshi Doi already knew Western Reiki and he got to know through Usui Reiki Ryoho Gakkai, the association that Mikao Sui founded. Uh, in 1922, this year is 100 years from 1922 uh, in April. No? Yeah. Soon, soon it will be 100 years. And um, um, so Doi Sensei belongs to Sureki Ryoho Gakkai, and uh, he knows that also about uh, traditional Reiki, but he saw uh, merits you know, in both types of Reiki. And he, he also, only, not only, how do you say, fusion to, yeah, to the blend types of Reiki. Yeah. Yes, uh, he also updated some techniques, you know, uh, that uh, started from Mikao Sui. I love that. And, and when we had the print interview, we mentioned that, that in a way, in your case, you know, you lived in Japan, you live in New York, you live in Madrid, you are a blend of Western Japanese. So Gendai is like the perfect fit for you. Like you embody it literally. You know? Yes, very, really. Um, yes, it was. Yeah, it's like uh, destiny because I started, when I went in 1999, I studied with three types of, uh, I studied with three, Jap no, four Japanese masters because two of them teach together <laughs> as, as a pair. So, um, but um, Gendai Reiki Ho is what uh, attracted me a lot. That's why, even though I had economic difficulty, I had to go back to Japan in 2000. Yes, 2000. Yes. <laughs> and, um, Beautiful. Mm -hmm. and, and I love that commitment to practice. And I wanted to go over because one of the things <laughs> that we were talking when we were before this interview, <laughs> it was really that more emphasis, not only on hands-on healing or meditation, just like Hattori Ho, but also into gentle healing, right? Like instead of that very intense, like blast of energy that sometimes we think is like, I'm feeling it, this is working, really going towards more of a daily practice that little by little, gently, you know, without losing your grounding and going a little bit crazy, like you actually bring a lot of healing. So I wanted to have your point of view on that because mm -hmm. you were the one who brought it and you said it beautifully. <laughs> yes. Um... Um, um, it's it's a little bit crazy, you know, this story because I'm from Japan. My parents are from Japan, and I did abroad for my father's job. He used to work for Japan Airlines, um, and I was also as young a uh, person, very how do you say? Um, against you not know, many things of Japanese culture, but now after living uh, abroad for a long time, I love my culture, I love my tradition. And so, um, but uh, to tell you the truth, it can be very surprising for Western practitioners. Um, Japan 
is very contaminated by uh, Western culture. Yeah. Um, af after post-war, no, World War, and also Meiji period also, uh, we received uh, a very big influence, Western culture's influence. So in Japan, Reiki is something quick. You go oh, wow. to uh, seminar or course of four hours sometimes, or um, uh, as oh, wow. maximum seven hours for one each level, and then nothing, no most of the time. Um, so I'm not, uh, and not many people want to deepen or practice uh, Reiki with uh, continuity or or constant, constant, no constant, 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 constantly, constantly. Yeah, constantly. No. yeah. And that is where my Japanese origin said, oh, that is not right. I love this and I want to, uh, how do you say, uh, grow as a person, I want to heal myself. I feel very comfortable doing Reiki. And each time I grow, I feel very comfortable with, with myself. And I'm feeling each, each, each year no, better. I'm not getting older, but each year better. And I said, this is we can get this only through practice, no? But I'm not a serious person. No? I'm uh, very uh, crazy too, no? So what I got to get to, I got to <laughs> accomplish this uh, practice in a very casual way, or sometimes, no, my practice just put uh, my hands or my body. That's all. I get. To, I I fall asleep and that's all. But I always have you no know, um, several days a week, um, uh, even though it's a short time of practice with um, my Reiki family. I, I I call it my Reiki family, uh, and. Uh, we do uh, group work, very uh, deep group work sometimes, but sometimes no, uh, with a lot of, uh, how do you say, uh, amena, como este uh, yeah, enjoyment, yeah, like it's, it's, yeah, it's brilliant. It's not, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes, so, and, um, but all, all with a lot of uh, continuity and also, uh, very so, constantly, you know, constantly, very like so the word will be consistency. See, consistency, consistency. Yeah. Said, yeah, and um, no, I don't know. It, it it's uh, it's like for many of us, it's a joy, and also it's like a hobby. It's like I don't know, part of our life, and. Um, the, this is what I got uh, myself, no, uh, for myself accomplished. But um, also, I'm not uh, also uh, how do you say um, very. Uh, I'm not a rigid mind person, no. So, but uh, I am investigating from 1999. I have been always uh, been um, making questions to Deutsch Sensei and um, deepening a lot in what is the what is how do you say um, knowledge you know, of uh, about Reiki and sometimes writing about it. But for now, I, I am just dedicating to translate for publishing books. I, I haven't published my own book yet because I don't feel ready, but um, uh, I sometimes publish through my 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 blog or my uh, website. Yes. And, and <laughs> I, so it's funny, we really appreciate because I think when I started in Reiki, there was not a lot of good material. There were mostly like some of like of the manuals published. So and for the people, obviously they're in Spanish, hopefully they'll be soon in English, but you have a beautiful uh, translation of Hiroshi Doi's about traditional Reiki with his speeches, because it's even better because it's like, it's not just like method of what to do. 
is really understanding the depth. And again, he went also like he has a beautiful description where he say it went from like healing to and well being to one practice of spiritual like which call is enlightenment. So it's a beautiful and it's very simple and down to earth. And then the mm -hmm. of the waka, but we'll go to the waka a little later as another question. <laughs> So I think it's also how beautiful that some of us, like, you know, there is this need for material that, because sometimes we say we don't need the head, but we do need some understanding to guide our practice, right? So I love awesome. that you're doing that. And I think that that is the difference. It's not intellectual knowing. It's mm -hmm. almost that understanding that opens the door to deeper levels of practice, right? It's not just about reading this. It's filling it with your body and practicing through those filters. So I'm... That book, I read it, and for me, it was so soothing. I just had the best time ever, so I really appreciate it. And so I wanted to go a little bit because one thing that you were mentioning mm -hmm. is a meditation called Hatsure Ho. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. obviously, I know it because I had the same shift from Western to Japanese, but I wanted you to explain to people what Hatsure Ho is and a little bit how is, how is part of your practice. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so it's something that um, Mikao Sui started uh, when he founded um, Usure Kiryoho. And it's a series of, um, uh, of uh, work, uh, not uh, purification, cleansing, energy cleansing work, and also uh, spiritual elevation uh, work. You know? So, mm, if you don't mind, I will just uh, introduce uh, the steps without yeah. explaining how to do yeah. them. Um, for the spiritual elevation, uh, the first thing uh, they use is um, Emperor Meiji. It's, it's poem, not waka or tanka. No? Uh, the, uh, tanka is a short format of uh, waka, a Japanese poem. And, uh, uh, 31, how do you say, syllables, uh, poem, and um, because we selected 125 of them, and uh, uh, he used to make his student recite uh, these poems. So the first step of Hatsureho is to recite uh, and one of these poems. Well, before that is a uh, step, but okay. And then uh, we do uh, energy cleansing through what we call kengyoku, you know, the dry basing or yeah. basing with reiki, you no know, reiki emanate, emanating from our hands. And then we have another cleansing, uh, it's uh, purification. Uh, how do you say? Uh, uh, it's purifying bread. It's Re purifying Re bread. Re yeah, in English. Uh, uh, yes, yes. Uh, so, yes, yes, yes. And um, through visualization of uh, white light of Reiki and a certain type of breathing, you cleanse your inner energy. You know, that what we, what the house sensei used to call uh, inner Reiki. You know, because there has to be uh, the resonance, a good resonance between inner Reiki and what is external Reiki, you not know, Reiki of the universe. So, and then uh, there's what we call um, concentration, no? Or something yeah, like seishin that. Doitsu, we always kill it, we keep it as Seishin Toitsu here in English. Uh, okay, yeah. Seishin Toitsu, great, great, yeah. that is great. Seishin Toitsu, uh, in a certain way, of course. And uh, then we, uh, when they practice in group with uh, Shihans guiding this session, uh, the, the, each student uh, receive from those two Shihans uh, what we call Reiju, purification by masters of Shihan. Uh, so it's the external purification, no? because Hatsureho mostly is uh, internal or more for ourselves to uh, cleanse ourselves. No? But now here, uh, when they practice in group, they, we receive no? uh, ratio purification from the master. And then uh, another work for elevating our spirit is uh, reciting uh, Gokai, no? five principles of Reiki. Uh, and also, uh, it's very interesting no? because Usui Reiki Ryoho really is uh, self-purification and self-development uh, work. But 
always we have to extend no, uh, the light to the, the forward of our universe. So that step of Hatsureho is a uh, player, what we call player. We ask for you know, health and happiness of, uh, of the rest of the world or not universe. That, that is Hatsureho, and it's a great idea, I think, as we said, they had you know, for uh, practitioners of Reiki because it's something very present to do, something that's easy to do, but very effective, very effective. So you don't have to go to Mount, Mount Grama and to fast or do something very hard. Um, you just have to do something very present and then you can get a very good effect, no? And I think Uzi Sensei really was great, no? A great figure, I think. You just say something amazing because and i'm like i'm like again you know i grew up in latin america scorpio very like i have to go and climb mountains to become a better <laughs> human being and actually you no know, as you say we just need to be present right and and we don't need to yeah of course we want to have an understanding of reiki we don't need to get classes and classes and higher like a, we just need to practice consistently with presence and i think that makes it so accessible and hatsuri is oh as you said it's like it's a very it's a series of technique it takes a little bit of but it's not very complex like every human being can do it even a kid can do it uh there is no physical requirements it's just presence and being connected mind and body through the breath and visualization so i think what just <clears throat> what you just said is such a gift right don't go up mount mm -hmm. grandma like if you can go to japan and go that's amazing like you're gonna have to, <laughs> like you know it is but we don't need to do all of that to have a very deep Reiki practice, we just need consistency and presence. And I love that. And it's funny because I didn't know very much, many wakas before your book. I knew about wakas, but I would recite the precepts almost like the initial waka. No, no, no. That's very hope because also familiar. But now I have your little book about wakas. <laughs> and there's yeah. some very beautiful ones. So now once a week I go to a waka and I'm, mm -hmm. I'm really dying for you to translate this in English beautifully. Mm -hmm. Because the translation mm. I find in, in internet are not as, mm. as in your book. And because this is now sound only, they're called Poems of the Emperor Meiji. And the subtitle, which I love, is Como Nubes Florecidas. Yeah. And that is like blooming clouds. And I just find that term beautifully. And you actually work with a poet to help bring, like it was you translating with a poet. So there is really a lot of love into this beautiful illustration mm -hmm. and I, I do we talked about this like we do want to bring beauty like you're very much about also bringing that beautiful visual together mm -hmm. with like this richness of the language of, of Reiki right which is also very Japanese thing I think you know the character yeah. the visual and the so I really mm -hmm. like that so wakas are something is there anything you want to tell more about wakas how you can work with wakas for the people watching this Yes, um, well, of course, um, reading them, but reciting them, that would be very interesting because then you can use fully the power of what we call kotodama, maybe it's a Japanese term that is, uh, how do you say? So more it's than reciting no, no. them is more chanting them than like monotone chanting. You can do that with the wakas? Like you do with no, the no, you just um, recite them in a the normal way. Yes, okay. and uh, it's uh, in, to work with power of words. Not like as kotodama. Uh, the only thing that you have to do is to emit the sound. So that this sound, the, the vibration of the sound is what is going to act in you. you know? And also these words come from a very pure heart uh, person with a lot of um, wish to grow as a person. And um, that's Emperor Meiji. And uh, so these words also had a lot of, how do you say, strength or force? I don't know which one. Yes, yeah, they have like this, in a way, like they're powerful. Yeah, they have like- Very a powerful. Yeah, I think. 
And for those yes. of you who don't know Japanese history, Emperor Meiji was the one who really modernized Japan starting in yeah. 1865. And he was a person, he was supposed to be actually not talk a lot, but he was very, he had a deep spiritual practice, it is said. And he wrote how many, 10,000 wakas? Or like, you know better than me. Oh. He wrote thousands of 10, them. 10,000, no, it's 100,000. I don't know how to say 100,000 in English. In Spanish, 100,000. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 100,000 is, ex so that's, mm -hmm. So he was very, and you know, people really followed that spiritual guidance through his poems, right? Mm -hmm. They were not just poems like, I'm sitting, I'm in love. They were all like meant to give a teaching, you know? So yes, I love that you're rescuing that practice because I, you know, I was reading some of them and they really can mm -hmm. inform your practice again, beyond reciting It's like, hey, like, you know, what is he trying to say this? How does that apply to the practice? So. You do have to do the English version quite soon. Yes, I hope. And also with Spanish version, what I'm doing is um, um, I am writing about um, Yosei. It's called Yosei when it's written by Japanese emperor. And um, I'm writing about them. And also I am uh, organizing workshop where people can read, recite, and uh, share their uh, interpretation about the poem. And I also give them historical context and that classical interpretation of um, you know, people, some um, scholars of uh, the age, uh, of the time of, uh, how do you say, no, the, uh, of Taisho era, era okay. is uh, after Meiji era. So we are deepening a lot in this truth because it's a very important part of Usureki uh, Iroho practice. It's it really they already when you comprehend them, when you comprehend a lot of other things you know, um, surrounding these poems, uh, you understand why you know, Mikael Usui had to uh, incorporate uh, the in his practice or, or in a practice of the regular students, um, but. Uh, reading and reciting uh, these points. I am joining those uh, workshops. If you do them online, please, since I have- Ah, yes, I, I, of and course, you understand Spanish, of so course. I'll be joining those whenever you post them. So do have an online component, please. And, and I see what comes to me because I love how much information you share, you know, about Kododamas, about the Gyoseis, because they're really, mm -hmm. yeah, not more than Wakas. And Hatsureho, and what I think it's for me, like when I hear this, again, we don't want to go intellectual, but it's an invitation. Often we finish a certification and we think we know everything there is to know about Reiki. Mm -hmm. um, but first of all, we all have very different way of practicing. I'm very auditive, I'm very visual. I'm not that great at kinet everything that is kinetic. And mm -hmm. what I want to invite people is like, sometimes just out of curiosity to always keep a beginner's mind, no matter how many years, because sometimes we have been practicing and we are very deep practice, but we can read a different tool, a different filter, a different information and experience of another practitioner who has different mm -hmm. qualities than we have. And mm -hmm. then that sparks in us something else, or at least to know like, hey, I practice this way, but there are other ways to practice for people who are different than me, right? Mm -hmm. and, and you said it, we all have different practices, but the core is the same, right? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a great invitation. So you've impressed me and I'm like in awe of everything that you know, and, and also like for people who cannot see your face, like you have such a beautiful, peaceful, joyful <laughs> presence uh, that they cannot hear in the podcast. But mm -hmm. I also wanna get, um, again, I'm trying to also make, and you say very well, Rick is very human, very down to earth, right? And your approach mm -hmm. is So as humans, sometimes we, do oops or mistakes mm -hmm. i'm not gonna i have a very bad word for that in spanish i'm not gonna <laughs> say it uh, but those mistakes are first two things they teach us lessons but they also make us into compassionate teachers right mm -hmm. so and they help us relate to a student from a point of view that we would not have if we 
were so anal that we will never do a mistake. So I wanted you to share perhaps one little thing that you either was a step that you learned to go deeper or something that you like, it's kind of almost like a funny mistake that you learn a lesson that you still share today with your students. Yes, uh, I definitely have one <laughs> that is very <laughs> big. <laughs> yes. Uh, I'm still working on it as my spiritual, how do you say, work, no? Um, yes, when I started Reiki, it, it was a very, such a, um, how do you say, um, experience, no? Um, from, from heart, very pure, no? And I got to know very, no, uh, wonderful people, no, one after another. It was like, uh, no, in chain, no, and uh, I, I ended up being surrounded by really beautiful, no, ja uh, the Reiki family. And, uh, but of course, uh, I left my profession with, I used to earn money because they used to pay me. So I didn't have any problem receiving money. But when I got to know all those wonderful, beautiful persons, um, it, I started to have difficulty um, charging money in many occasions. And that's very typical, I think, um, on spiritual practitioners, we fall into this, kind of uh, misunderstanding. It's really mis my misunderstanding, you know? And um, of course, I charge my courses and things like that, but we have been doing many activities together. And uh, even though many of them know they, how do you say, um, they in a very, uh, nice way and also with a, uh, a sense of humor yeah you no know, they always tell me you not know, but you are, are you are so how do you say idiot why don't you charge us no it's like but oh my God, I, 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 didn't to tell you to charge you you must have been like really like not charging enough when people tell you like hey yeah you know you're in trouble yeah Yes, and I, sometimes I was so, so into helping others. I forgot about myself. And that's a big trap that it has too when you are in this kind of world. So oh, I, I am I've been working to, to cleanse uh, not this kind of blockage I have, emotional blockage uh, I have. Uh, for many years, it's it's not like some some how do you say emotional block or do you say block or yeah blockage? emotional yeah it's it's um, or they also call them limiting beliefs emotional blockages yeah mm -hmm. it's for me like it's also a perception of how the world is or like needs not met all this mix of and also mm -hmm. honestly as women we were educated to serve and give and yeah you know. And I think the new generations are a little bit more balanced, but there is something in also the education of women we're supposed to make sure mm -hmm. everybody's happy and that's our goal. And, and usually we're meant to do that for free, right? Yeah. <laughs> I was so happy. You know, it's, it's a kind of trap in, in that you fall into because you feel happy helping others, but you need to eat, you have to pay your rent. You know? So, of course, I've learned a lot, and I think it has, it's one of the, the most, um, uh, how do you say, uh, for me, a positive uh, lesson that I am going through because when it is very difficult for you uh, when you have a, a challenge that are challenge that is difficult for you to overcome 
uh, it really makes you work on that. And uh, it's, it's like, uh, for me, it's like, an, uh, how do you say, an adventure. And uh, I learned also to enjoy this kind of adventure. You know? Sometimes maybe something that could seem like, uh, seems like uh, negative, it could happen to you. But uh, nowadays, I just thank these things that happens to me as my life lesson. And after, um, after uh, how do you say, um, passing through these kind of uh, challenges, I always grow and I'm so happy. Uh, I think what makes me happy as a person is my personal growth. So uh, it's, it's not, I don't know, many people uh, don't like and fear a very big challenge or difficulties in life, but it's, it sounds a little bit weird, but I love them now. <laughs> I love them because it, they make me grow a lot. Um, and also I work to, I cleanse, I cleanse, I cleanse. I also don't go understanding some things. And maybe I started cleansing one aspect of myself, but without knowing uh, the other aspects are uh, being, how do you say, um, purified yes. and you not know, resolved. You know? So it's, it's very fascinating, I think, uh, no. <laughs> pathway. <no? laughs> No, I love what you say because, and there are a couple of things, sorry, I'm going to go, first of all, there is, I think you keep saying purify, right? So I think sometimes in Reiki practice, we strive to become versus letting go of what we're not, mm -hmm. right? So I think that is a, always an interesting mm -hmm. switch we can do because we're not supposed to achieve, we just purify, it's already in there, right? Mm -hmm. So, and letting go of what is no longer serving. And the other thing I, I love is sometimes we see I'm a Reiki practitioner. I have to place my hands and heal and heal and heal. But at the end, Reiki is more than, and I know like treatment is hands off, Reiki off, whatever. But at the end, it is a spiritual practice. And as you say, those challenges become the soil for it to bloom, right? So mm. I think that is very important because a lot, and one of my biggest oops, when I went into Reiki, I believe like if I practice Reiki, everything will go great in my life. Mm -hmm. And I, I've seen with my students that also happens. It's like, why am I in life so crappy? I just did my Reiki master. <laughs> and then you resist it. And I resisted for many years. So, and I love that you mentioned that because we don't, we don't often talk like, yeah, you may be a Reiki practitioner with 20 years. There's still going to be hard challenges, but mm -hmm. your way of approaching them is mm -hmm. different. I told someone when I was like going in a video and said like, how's your life? I've said like, it's actually quite crappy. But I can mm -hmm. deal with it. Like, I'm just trying mm -hmm. to walk through it. Like, I'm fine, but it's not that really. So mm -hmm. I still don't love them. So you're way beyond me. I still like, I have a moment of resistance, but there is mm -hmm. the knowledge that, hey, I can handle this. I'll sit with this and perhaps I'll grow out of this. And mm -hmm. also compassion when I cry the 15 minutes in the shower. But it, I, I love that you mentioned that we don't talk a lot about that in the Reiki community. So I'm hiding that. Oops. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and then I also want to build on the one about charging because I think probably like a lot, we always leave the job and then we realize we feel bad because we enjoy it. We have the perception. If this is so wonderful, I shouldn't be charging. Actually, work should not be a torture, right? We have that weird confusion. But I wanted, and usually I ask more of a, a like a tip to deepen their practice, but I think you gave us quite a few. What is the one thing you will tell someone who's facing that same issue about charging the right amount or at least something for what they're offering? And obviously, if they have the right training and the tools, because a lot of times I see actually people who are less qualified the one charging, right? So if there is one tip that helps you start that journey of like, hey, there is balance, right? Like if people are telling me what to charge, I should like, there is a reason. What is the one thing that helped you on that journey that you will tell someone else? Yeah, and also, um, 
I think the um, Reiki is also, of course, a wonderful and it's a very effective tool. And we can do many things uh, with Reiki and we solve many things with Reiki. But also, we have to be open minded, not to listen to other people. Maybe people who are uh, a coach, or maybe people who are just uh, wise and are, uh, are sharing not their point of view about all this. And what most, uh, what, what helped me most is open my mind and not try to solve everything with Reiki. I tried it during many years. I said, oh, no, no, I have enough with Reiki. That is a big oops too, no? <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. No, but I realized that I wasn't solving too much this. And so I, when I started to open my eyes, of, and also uh, it's, uh, the COVID no, crisis, that made us uh, maybe a little bit uh, dependent or too much dependent on internet, but it helped me a lot because I started to see um, Japanese instructors you know, in this kind of field in spirituality, new spirituality in Japan. And I never thought of listing something from Japanese people. I always <laughs> was looking towards um united states i thought that, that the best messages come from united states and i said oh my god not that so it opened my eyes i think i think that is very important too that is reiki too actually you know yeah, reiki is not only letting go <laughs> of the of the prejudices right of the opinions yeah. of the filters it's really opening your mind it's like for yeah. me, it always brings me to fudoshing, right? It's very like, it's a term that means mm -hmm. like mind like a mountain, but it's very expanded and not distracted. And that, yeah, and I'm the opposite. I'm completely biased. If it's Japanese, it's better. I'm like the opposite of you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, oh, it's, it's, it's like, um, I don't know, it's like, uh, Reiki is not just uh, long, uh, applying hands or doing uh, purification and things like that. It's uh, not our life uh, itself, you know, uh, how we live our life and how we go growing, developing as a person. And um, also in a certain way, um, we are you know, uh, preparing you know, ourselves to go from this world in a peaceful way, you know, understanding each time what it is about to go from this, this world. You know? So it's like everything, Rick is everything, you know, uh, what we are. But it's like we are living human experiences and thanks to uh, Thanks to how this is thanks to Reiki, uh, we are living from a different perspective of this human experience. So everything uh, converts to Reiki for not uh, many of us. You know? Yeah, it's, I, I find it very beautiful and really, really appreciate, and also the clarity with which you're sharing. So I really appreciate that. Especially as you say, I think, you know, talking about challenges, COVID has been a challenge. So obviously it's not because you have a Reiki practice that you'll fly through it, like it will still affect you. And, but you will actually, again, it will become that soul. So I, I love that you mentioned that. So I do have a drawing for you. <laughs> so it's, and I hope because it's very golden. So I hope it will read well. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow, oh my God, I think it's incredible because there is a synchronicity here. Uh, the dragon. <laughs> I, I very... didn't even know why I did a dragon. It just, oh I, it's God. the first time I draw a dragon in all my interviews. But it's, it's, I'm very surprised. Right. I, I, it, oh my God, because it's like Reiki. 
I when I didn't know what Reiki was, I was I was full of prejudice towards the word Reiki. And when I started to hear some years ago from some people, ah, uh, it's, it's, it's some Japanese person, they see dragon and the dragon has power. And I thought that is crazy. You know? <laughs> I was like, like that. But now I am understanding about the, the manifestation of energy you know, as dragon. And I'm very attracted to the dragon energy uh, from a few months ago, and now I'm very surprised. <laughs> well, no, <laughs> you're like, I, like, you don't see, but my eyes are watering. So most of the symbols and the people who have seen the podcast on my Instagram, you can actually go back and I usually go do flowers, uh, scales, waves, birds. Is I've never done a dragon before. And when we had the interview, you and I, the pre-interview, and for the people listening to is uh, most podcasts, I actually do a pre-interview to get to know the person. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I need to do a dragon. And so I researched Japanese dragons, like, because I don't even know what they meant. And they were beautiful. Mm -hmm. They were for protection. They were more related to water. Uh, than just like they're very different than uh, European dragons. They're actually very mm -hmm. good. Like they're really good things for you to have dragons. You know, they're not yes. like in. I think in Europe where I grew up, dragons were seen as people who would destroy with fire. Mm -hmm. You know, as enemies, mm -hmm. and in Japan is the opposite. So, so I yeah. guess you have something to do with dragons because, and you know. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, I'm very <laughs> surprised in a very good way, in a positive way. Yes, um, of course, uh, it's like uh, we are living in the time in, in, in there's a lot of synchro synchronicity, you know, between yeah. uh, persons who uh, started, you know, this kind of pathway. So, but it is very surprising. <laughs> yeah, Listen, I'm glad that, that it means something because, you know, I do the drawings. First of all, I, I do love it, but also like as a thank you, because, you know, this is an hour of your time and it's a, you share the wisdom and most of my guests do with such an open heart. And, and I'm really grateful for that. So the least like for me, like doing a drawing is a way of, of deep gratitude and from a good side, not like, okay, I'm like, it's just like, I'm grateful that our Reiki community is coming together and opening up. Uh, in a way, my mission is to bring the education I didn't have when I started for a few years. And also like knowing that some people cannot train, as you say, not any one of us can go to Mancurana. Like I will wish I go to Madrid and will go to your classes as well. But, you know, like we do have, you know, we have the resources we have. So I do want people like, okay, if you want, there is that information and these wonderful people mm -hmm. who have deep practices. So I'm really, really grateful that, you know, you opened your heart today. And again, not only that, you are really actively bringing beautiful work, careful work, very curated because the books you bring, you don't write like in a day, right? They take years of research and understanding and you work with teams of illustrators. So I really appreciate that as well. So I'll be making <laughs> you so that much. drawing. Hopefully it's been making it to Europe quite well, but I'll bother mm -hmm. you after for the address and everything. But, but Rika, it's been such a pleasure to get to meet you. There are no words. Um, again, there are no words. I'm just like, that's it. And this is very weird for me to be speechless. Uh, uh, thank you. Uh, um, it's really um, also the COVID situation opened me to this kind of communication. And it's really people think this kind of communication is very cold, no, but it's not. It's mm -hmm. like something mysterious happens and uh, we connect, you know, and uh, it's, it, uh, I feel like you are here in the same neighborhood, no, and uh, there's no distance, uh, no, so uh, really, 
thanks to everything that happens in our lives. You know? and thank you so much also uh, for your proposal to uh, for this interview. <laughs> thank you so thank much. You so much. <laughs> I enjoyed it very much. <laughs> Me too. Thank and you. beware because I may be going to Madrid in May to see some family. Oh! I may reach out to... and, and we'll speak Spanish. You'll meet a different person speaking Spanish. Okay, great. Please come to Spain. Yes, of course. Thank you yes. so, so much, Rika. Have a great, great evening because it's evening over there. And mm -hmm. I hope to stay in touch and to read and look at beautiful work done by you. And I'm like checking up that Waka class. So do an online component because I know that Again, Spanish speakers, we don't always have a lot of resources, like most resources yeah. are in English. So we love to share resources for people living in Latin America or whose native language is Spanish mm -hmm. and they prefer to practice to be able to share those classes. Okay, great. Thank you so much. Muchas gracias. Ciao. <laughs> Adios. Thank you. Bye.